after more than 4,000 minutes, 104 goals, and an untold number of F words, the posh prepare for their final fixture of a topsy-turvy season. If Ron's project is going to end on a high, Peterborough will need to beat Wickham convincingly and pray Rochdale can win at Lincoln. And to achieve their end of the equation, Barry and Ron need one final match-winning push from the team. First, we've got 90 minutes out there to finish it off for our own supporters, yourselves and your teammates. Let's fucking go out there and want to win the game and see what happens elsewhere. I want to send the fans home fucking happy and in the belief that even if we ain't made it this year, we've got fucking one hell of a chance of becoming a good team and doing it next year. All right, lads, let's fucking have it, all of us. Good luck. Come on, believe. we're fucking here. Come on, let's do it. Come on, boys. Come on, sense. Come on. Come on, boys. Come on. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Come on, The match kicks off and it appears the players are in the mood to give it a go. Semple in possession, good ball up towards Crow. Nice little kick from Crow to Newton. Then Newton plays it to uh, Logan, who got into a good position. An excellent flowing move from Peterborough United. Crow coming in from the right, he scored 17 goals. Cross to this near side, Logan. Earlier in the week, Ron had practiced set plays specifically for this game, and a free kick almost provides a breakthrough. Here it goes, oh, and it's a save from the keeper, he went for goal there. Overhead effort maybe from Lobert, and finally turns, oh, into the side netting there. Fucking hell! But just when it seems the posh are well on top, Wickham's Jermaine Easter produces a stunning goal against the run of play. Sean, that was, weren't it? Undaunted, the posh continued to take the fight to Wickham. But in comes the cross, and there's the head. Oh, he's just wide of the mark. What a great effort there from Danny Crow. Meanwhile, 50 miles further north at Lincoln, the match is goalless. The Rochdale show they're capable of upsetting the odds and helping the cause. Farrell with a shot on the turn, but it's on to the... Roof of the stand. Disappointing. Fucking joke! Half time at London Road. Peterborough United nil. Wickham won. Although they're a goal down, Ron and Barry know there's still a glimmer of hope, especially as the Lincoln game remains poised at nil nil. It's the final thing that's letting us down, lads. Sean, your fault the goal. You've come and fucking missed the ball. Your fault. Don't let it fucking happen again. Ryan, you got in great positions, mate. Get the fucking ball in. Job done. That's all you're out there for. Take him on, get the ball in, job fucking done. Yeah. David, your first touch is letting you down. Get hold of it and fucking have a go at them. Go inside, go outside, fucking go at them. But listen, you're doing all right. We've played some good football and we've created some good chances. <laughs> Don't get your fucking heads down and give it up. Fucking winning line, 45 minutes, hard run. Come on. Shoot, shoot, shoot. And shoot they do. But the team are thwarted by wayward finishing and a defiant display by Wickham's goalkeeper. But it was terrific play from the Northern Ireland into the penalty area. Must be all good save off the keeper's legs. Needing goals fast, Barry and Ron make a final throw of the dice, sending on Jamie Day and Lloyd Apara to form a four-man strike force. Go on, Lloyd. Open them legs. Go on, open them legs. I'll be a player. But then comes the news that everyone is dreading. With 18 minutes to go, Lincoln score. And virtually guarantee they'll hang on to the final playoff place. Back at London Road, the posh estate is sealed with minutes to go, when Wickham score a soft second goal.
as we rather suspected, have fallen short. And a disappointing, traumatic season has finished here on a disappointing note. After a season of great promise, Peterborough finished just outside the playoffs. It's a hugely disappointing ending, and the fans are quick to express their anger. As for the players, they know that ultimately they've let a great chance of promotion slip through their fingers. All the best, lad. Just disheartening, man. Just disheartening. Finish the season getting beat 2 0. That means so it's just disappointing. Sometimes I think you've got hard hands up and say you weren't good enough. Probably some performances from the team you weren't just good enough. You know what I mean? On a personal level, it probably looks like being my last game for the club, and, and you know, it couldn't have ended a worse way, and I'm gutted. Right, chaps, well done. You give your, give your lot. Weren't quite good enough. You got in great positions. Needed a bit of luck. We didn't fucking have it. Nothing we can do about it now. Never mind. In his four months at the club, Ron has spent countless hours with the players, building a rapport and sharing in both good and bad times. But now he has to say goodbye. Thanks for your cooperation. Sorry it didn't work out the way that you wanted it to work out. Once again, thanks. It's been good working with you. And hope you, you know, you go on and do good things. Hope, particularly for Barry and the rest of you, hope you hope next season successful for you. Well, I'd like to thank you, Ron, because without your help, mate, and your no, money, no. we wouldn't have got paid for the last two months. No, Fuck knows what's going to happen to the next two months, lads. I've got to go and sell my body. <laughs> I oh, know, fucking frightening for yeah, it. All the best, <laughs> So the final whistle has been blown on the troubleshooter experiment. Although Peterborough failed to win promotion, Ron has been instrumental in exposing major problems at the club. Firstly, rookie manager Steve Bleasdale found it difficult to impose his authority. And Steve was reluctant to take Ron's advice. My domain is the dressing room. If there's antagonism from you, I don't want to be in there. There were splits in the camp and underachievement on the pitch. And a complete lack of cash kept thwarting Ron's plans. I think Stefan Moore would be a far better bet. Well, Stefan yeah. Moore's going to be expensive, isn't he? I mean, the one thing you'd have to say about being a Peterborough, there was never a dull moment. A fucking sight! When you beat them by sheer effort, it pisses you off big time. A lot of ups, there's been a lot of downs, there's been a few problems. Ups! Calm down! Calm down! Calm down! Calm down! Well, I think you got value for money in the end. I thought I'd robbed you, but I don't feel sorry for you anymore. I mean, it was a real unbelievable turmoil place to be in the last three or four months. I mean, I've found out just how hard it is. You know, when people talk about the England job and say, that's, um, what a hard job that is. That is a far easier job than Peterborough. Far easier. There was uh, lots of hidden agendas. There was a lot of little cliques, little camps here and there, and Steve Bleasdale become gaffer and he found it difficult. You know, I look back and I think, Ron the troubleshooter had absolutely no chance whatsoever from the day he walked in, from the day he walked out. But Ron's troubleshooting brief was much wider than winning promotion. He was also charged with improving all facets of a struggling lower league club, turning around their fortunes, and providing a brighter future. Yeah, it's nice to meet a man of his calibre and uh, he's always given me confidence and uh, so he's been good towards me and uh, to the rest of the team, I think. I think he sort of uh, told boys what they could maybe do a little bit differently in their game, maybe off the pitch, do you know what I mean? But individually, I think he's had a positive effect. I respect him and, and I seen his house on the telly the other day on uh, footballers' pads or something and you don't get a house like that for being a mud. He's obviously done something right in this time, hasn't he? He came to me, you know, we haven't got a goalkeeping coach. Let's get a goalkeeping coach. Fine, one. I ain't got no money. What did he do? He went out and got Tony Godden sponsored. Physio walks out on us. We're in the shit. What happens? Ron picks up the phone to his old mate, experienced Jim Walker, absolutely different class. You know, he got us a golf day. I've been here 10 years, 11 years now. We've never had a golf day once since I've been here. Got us in 25 grand. But it wasn't, don't stop it, the 25 grand. At that golf dinner, there was a gentleman, he has since, with his business colleagues in, in the city of Peterborough, 
put 50 grand into the, the Centre of Excellence, which is absolutely fantastic. And it's ongoing. So Ron was tremendous for this football club and, and, and its survival, really. With Ron gone and a new season underway, life in the lower leagues goes on. Former Lincoln boss Keith Alexander has been appointed the new Peterborough manager. Steve Bleasdale is training for his UEFA Pro licence. Phil Bolland, Richard Logan and Dave Farrell, Ryan Semple and James Quinn have all left the club. And Sean St. Ledger was sold to Preston North End for almost a quarter of a million pounds. Plus kickbacks, of course. But Barry Fry intends to stick around, despite growing debts and unrest from the fans. How could I pack this club up? What would all their moaners and groaners and mingy what's the names outside, what would they have to moan about? I'd completely destroy their life. I wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> Peterborough's that much away from having a team A that could go up next year. And if they could get a groundswell going, I think Peterborough's a town. They could support a championship side, yeah.